In the wake of the 2016 election, it became popular to speak about post-truth politics, as if wrestling for dominance over the public narrative had only just become a feature of democratic life. Much was made of a TV interview in which Kellyanne Conway, then a top advisor to President Donald Trump, defended Trump's press secretary, Sean Spicer, for saying that attendance at Trump's inauguration was the biggest in history, when it wasn't. Conway referred to this as giving alternative facts. This gaffe was portrayed as an unprecedented horror. But the problem of alternative facts is much bigger than comments from one or two Trumpian spin doctors. In 2004, CBS Evening News anchor Dan Rather was shown to have repeatedly put forward false allegations that George W. Bush had been charged with insubordination when he was in the Texas Air National Guard. When the Killian memos on which Rather had based his allegations were proven fictitious, the New York Times published the following headline. Memos on Bush are fake, but accurate, Typist says. Fake but accurate is an increasingly forgotten shibboleth for an old scandal, but it describes an attitude that has come to predominate in our era of contested truth. The narrative was right, but the facts were wrong, said Newsweek editor Evan Thomas in 2006. He was referring to the case of a black stripper, Crystal Magnum, whose false rape accusation against three players on the Duke lacrosse team were paraded in the press as evidence of white racism. Maybe Magnum had lied, Thomas argued, but her lie was in service of a higher, predetermined truth, the truth of rampant white evil. In much the same way, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez explained on a 60 Minutes interview that there's a lot of people more concerned about being precisely factually and semantically correct than about being morally right. Ocasio-Cortez was offended that her demonstrably false claims about economic policy were overshadowing the obvious truth of her moral rectitude. In 1998, the world scoffed at Bill Clinton's efforts to wriggle out of admitting to his affair with Monica Lewinsky by sputtering that it depends on what the meaning of the word is is. In the 21st century, though, Clinton's gaffe has practically become the philosophical motto of American politics. So what I'm trying to what I've been arguing on this on the show for a little bit here is that, you know, we talk about these things as if they were momentary news cycle scandals. They sort of flash across our uh, our headlines or they our news feed. And then we forget all about them. Right. Because, you know, American news readers have very, very short memories. Um, but what I'm trying to suggest here is that there, it's actually much, much bigger than like, oh, this side did a bad. Right. Or my team is right. And the other team is wrong. Or like, you know, Trump lies all the time or, uh, you know, Dan Rather lied or whatever. You know what? Team red, team blue, whatever. Right. We are looking at something that is much deeper seated and much more profound than just one or two politicians that lie to get what they want. We are looking at the temptation, the perennial temptation of the human heart to pull out that barrier between true and false just so that because because it, my my vision, my moral vision of the world, it's going to be so good. If we can just get there by just steamrolling over a couple facts, a couple bits of truth. Right. Um, and and that I've been suggesting that the whole metaverse thing, the only reason it's dystopian or fearsome to us is not because of any given article of, uh, you know, item of tech that we might or might not use, but because of the attitude that's implicitly expressed, which is that actually this is a good thing. It's a good thing to take away that boundary between true and, true and false, because look at all the great stuff you can get. You can get power, you can get wealth, you can get, you know, your life will be better. And if you prefer reality, well, that's just reality privilege. Just you just happen to be um, privileged to enjoy a good reality. Um, and I'm suggesting that no, the platonic insistence, which is really the Socratic insistence against the sophists and the priests. Socratics. Um, the, the Socratic insistence is there is such a thing as that which is uh, no matter who thinks so uh, or not, right? Some things are right and wrong no matter who thinks otherwise. 